28, 2012, Muslim Brotherhood leader Ahmed Badir unleashed a hate speech attack against all Florida legislators and public employees of the state capitol in Tallahassee, Florida. Badir, a former care official, displayed his true anti-woman, anti-white beliefs while speaking on the 22nd floor of the state capitol during Muslim Capitol Day. The United West investigative team captured this shocking video and now releases it to the general public. So, at the end of the day, we won. And those senators, those representatives learned a lesson. That if you're going to go after the Muslim community, the Muslim community is going to go after you. And we're not going to stay quiet. We're not going to sit back. When you punch, we're going to punch you twice as hard. When, we, when you fight us, we're going to fight you twice as three times as hard, and we're not going to stop fighting politically until you're out of office, because we just... Peace of Christ to all. Uh, look at the hypocrisy of the Muslim Brotherhood. He said, fight you politically. You see, he knew he cannot say the word fight alone, so he had to say fight politically because he knew that there is a consequence will go after that. Now, the question is, this is an Egyptian member of the Muslim Brotherhood. When he say, we want to fight you politically, is that really what the Muslim Brotherhood they are about? This is his organization. And this is their logo, as you see it in the screen. Do you know what it says there in Arabic? For sure, they have two swords because they are very peaceful. They have the Quran, they have two swords, and they have a word in here. Many of you do not know what that word. That word is a first word in a chapter in the Quran. Let us go and see what that word is saying in the Quran. It says, Wa'iddu. Where we can find this verse? Let us see. Here we go. The verse in the front of us. And now I challenge anyone to tell me why the Muslim Brotherhood, they choose this verse out of all the verses in this chapter. You see, this is not a chapter, verse number one in the, in the Quran. Uh, this is, or this even this chapter, this is verse number 60, chapter number 8, verse number 60. So why they quit all the other verses and they choose this one? Read with me what this verse is saying. Make ready for them. Who is them? You and me, the Christian, the Jews, the infidels, the Hindus, the Buddhas, the atheists. All the cast of, uh, cast of armed force. And the horses, for sure, at that time, this is the, the, the army machines, right? Horses, uh, swords, etc. So, this is, you know, the, 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 to, so you can kill the enemy of Allah. You can fight the enemy of Allah. And your enemy, because the enemy of Allah is your enemy, right? So, this guy, he's saying, speaking now about politically fighting you back. But in their logo, they are saying, prepare for them the weapon. Oh, you know what? It's not time for using the weapon yet. For now, we will play the game of politics until we get enough arms as the same as they are doing in Syria. When we have enough arms, then we will show you what we can do. Listen carefully. And you saw all the people that are walking the hallways. Most of them are white, blonde, pretty, and with no substance. I don't know, the guy in the front of me, the one is laughing, he is one of them. He, he don't look uh, like a black person. I, you see this bald guy? He is a blonde guy. And he, you yourself, you are an Egyptian, you are not a black person too. Now, he is playing the race card. Suddenly, the Muslims are people who play race card. And look, listen what he will say. Just look, hold a second. Listen what he will say. I'm telling you. So we don't want just pretty people walking around here. One thing that's missing in Tallahassee is our minorities not just Muslims. You hardly saw any black people in the hallways. I will tell you why he did not say, see black people, because black people, if they feel that there is something wrong, they will be there. But they are not there because you are the one who is doing wrong only. Did you get the point? So he's trying to make, to play the game of the race card, so maybe he can look, look more nicer, you know? Let us play the race card. And this is actually all what, what they do. They try to fool the, the African-Americans saying to them, we Muslims and you, we are in the same basket. You know, those people, they hate us. They are trying to ignite the hate between black and white. When the fact, nobody hate the black people as the Muslims. And we can prove it. And listen how we will prove that 
just a second after he finished what he's going to say. You hardly saw any black people in office. You hardly saw any black people on staff. Most of the black people in this building are working in housekeeping in the cafeteria. Uh, you know, we will see later what the black people do for Muhammad himself. He's a prophet. Are they leaders? Are they in the cafeteria? Or they are washing shoes? Now, when you take a job, you idiot, nobody is forcing you to be a black or white to take a job. Don't apply for a job to, 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 to be in the cafeteria. Apply for a job to be a doctor if you are a doctor. Apply for a job as a teacher if you are a teacher. And he forget this filthy, the son of Muta, that the one in the White House right now is a black African American. So the one who occupy the highest job in USA, he is an African American. Do you want to talk about justice? Show me an African was hired by your prophet to be the Khalifa, a king, a prince. Never, ever. Do you know that after the election of Obama, for the first time ever in the history of Saudi Arabia, they hire an imam, not somebody he called to their prayer like, like uh, the, the poor Bilal, the slave Bilal. Allah Akbar, Allah. No, an imam. Bilal was a slave of Muhammad and he was a slave of Abu Bakr and Muhammad, he captured him and he took him for himself. He was always calling for the prayer because nobody want to do the job. But they never have an imam in the Kaaba, he is a black. For the last 1400 years, after the election of Muhammad, of Muhammad Obama, the king of Saudi Arabia, he put a black imam first time ever in the history of Islam for the mosque of the Kaaba. And guess what? He was there only for three weeks because the Saudi rejected him. Nobody is racist as the Muslims. And I will show it. And now look what he will say. And that will be really funny. Listen carefully. And maybe security. What does it say about what happens in Tallahassee? The Constitution was written by racist slave owners, so who cares? Yeah, that again, what did you the Constitution yeah. was written by slave holders. And the Constitution was written by slave holders. Okay, just wait. So, are you saying the one who owns slave is bad? So, why the Quran don't forbid owning slaves? And then, isn't it the Quran written by those who own slave, slaveholders? Name for me one of the companion of Muhammad, including Muhammad. He do not own slaves. They don't exchange slaves for sex, for party. Isn't it your prophet who accepted a woman from Egypt, two women actually, as a gift? Somebody come to his door. Who is this? Prophet Muhammad, I brought you a gift. Oops, two beautiful women, they are my slaves. Thank you very much. Did Muhammad say no? Did Muhammad say let them go? Or Muhammad, he was sleeping with them. He was raping them. So you complain about the stockholders when you are a person who believe in the stockholding of slaves, stockhold, uh, sorry, slaveholders. Slaveholders, those are the ones who wrote our institution. Let us see with the proofs and evidence what Muhammad, he used to do to the slaves and the Muslims. And then we will see, according to those hypocrites, the one who own slave, they have no right to write constitution. This is mean your prophet, he have no right to be writing a law because Islamic law is the constitution of Muslims. And your prophet should be in jail. Let us go and read together with the proofs and evidence from Islamic books, not from ours. This is a chapter 66, verse number one in the Quran. And this is the book of Asbab al Nuzul. The wives of Muhammad, they found their husband having sex with Mary in their bed. Their, their, their problem was not about having sex with her. It was about having sex in their beds, which means he is a very filthy man. He moved the slaves even to his wife's bedroom. He don't go and do it somewhere else. No, he want to bring, look how insulting it is, another woman to the bed of other women and sleep with her in the bed of that woman. And look, he made it forbidden for him to sleep with this girl again. Supposedly, but Muhammad, he could not hold his mouth. He could not hold his promise because the filthy man, he cannot resist having sex with those women, the slaves. 
So he made a verse in the Quran saying that Allah told him how you can forbid yourself from having sex with women who Allah gave you the permission to sleep with them. The fact in the Quran nowhere by the way Muhammad was given a right to, to sleep with a slave girl unless she is captured. Muhammad he had the right to kidnap and rape but not a slave girl from buying it or as a gift. But here we go, Muhammad, he made, he made himself lawful for that. And he is saying to himself, how you can forbid yourself? He made a, a promise to his wives because they get angry. And they promised to expose him in front of the neighbors and everybody that he is sleeping around inside his wife's houses with uh, other women, with the slaves. You have no respect yourself. So he promised them, I will never do that. After two weeks, less than two weeks, Muhammad, he made a chapter. This chapter, as we see, chapter 66, verse number 1, saying, Oh, you should sleep with them. Allah gave him permission. Ask, ask him, actually, question him. How could you, how dare you, to forbid yourself from sleeping with the slaves? Not only that, in chapter 24, verse number, uh, chapter 4, verse 20, uh, 24, Muslim men are allowed to rape slave girls who they are captured even though they are married. Even they are married, but you should sleep with them. And actually, I want to show you that with more evidence. You know, you can read the explanation and interpretation of this story, but I will show you that from the hadith. Here we go. Read with me, please. This is a chapter 4, verse 24. The Quran is saying that all married women are, are forbidden for you, Muslims. Except who? Except the captives. So Quran not only allowed slavery, Islam is encouraging people to captive women and rape them even if they are married. It says clearly, and all married women are forbidden into you, save, which means except, those captives whom your right hand possess. So a Muslim man and those hypocrites, they are speaking about slaveholders. Their God, he is the God of the slaveholders, giving them permission to slay, sleep with married women. Those are not just slaves, captives. No, they are married. They have husbands. And I will show you another story so we can explain to you more from Muhammad Mouth himself. There's tons of hadith about slave girls, but I will show you some of them. Like you will see in here, Muhammad, he received a, a, a bunch of slave girls for sex. In here, a Muslim, he came to Muhammad and he said to him, O oh Allah Apostle, we got slave girls from war captives and we love property. What do you think about Kyotis? Uh, 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 you know, so he wanna, he wanna, you know, uh, he wanna use like condoms. He don't wanna, or he wanna, uh, you know, before he have orgasm, he wanna pull it out. You know what I'm talking about. So he's saying, what do you think if we're doing that? The Prophet he refused. He they he want them to make those women sex toys and even to make babies from them so to, he can spread Islam he said no you do that okay so now you are forcing the women you rape her and you force her to have a baby from you they are captives of war the prophet of Islam encouraging people to rape women and make them breathe it and this idiot in the video saying to us that those who wrote the constitution they are slaveholders do you dare to compare between them and your prophet, the filthy man? The one who wrote the constitution you are talking about, they gave the Indian who owned the land rights better than the American. They don't pay tax. Do you do the same for the Coptic who you took your land? Do you do the same for the Jordanian who you took their land? Do you do the same for the Jewish who took their land? Do you do the same for the Iraqi who took their land, the Babylon? Do you apologize for your crimes? Do you treat them better? Or you are harassing them and humiliating them and discriminating them until now? What a bunch of filthy people. And let us expose them together. Christ is Lord. And Islam is false and filthy religion. See you soon with more videos.